new to the world of gaming with innovative and unique VRS gameplay to complete commercial and critical failure, Nintendo's Virtual Boy is one of the more unique consoles and pieces of tech that Nintendo has ever produced. This console was seemingly ahead of its time, bringing the gaming experience to the people of the 1990s by wearing a virtual headset and being able to interact with popular franchises and series in real time. This innovative idea went through a lot of technological developments that were seemingly advanced, going with different pieces of tech to once again bringing the gaming experiences directly to you as a player. For many different reasons, the Virtual Boy unfortunately did not pan out the way Nintendo had planned it for, and it's regarded today as one of the worst console releases of Nintendo's history. This video here is going to be covering a brief history of the Virtual Boy, looking at what it is, what kind of games were on it, the development process, and the legacy that it holds today. Because once again, while Nintendo had great aspirations for it upon its release in 1995, this thing completely flopped, and is now really known today as one of Nintendo's greatest console failures. But let's explore how that came to be. Spending four years in development in the early 1990s and under the project name VR32, Nintendo had plans to release a brand new console in the middle of the console wars, with the PS1 on the horizon as well as the development of the Nintendo 64, Nintendo wanted to release a portable gaming experience to players where they would be able to virtually interact with video games. This was a very ambitious project for Nintendo at the time, and this led to them trying out different pieces of technology, including the most notable deal of the Virtual Boy's development, a deal with a company called Reflection Technologies. Reflection Technologies have been working on this LED eyepiece technology since the 1980s, and partnered up with Nintendo to create this new virtual gaming console. They took a lot of their own technological ideas and poured them into this game console, including taking a virtual headset and adding a red monochrome layer to it to give players the experience of being able to see these games in real time in addition to using them on the game controller itself. After many years of development, for approximately, this console was unveiled to the world as the first real interactive gaming experiences that players could have, interacting with games like they were actually there. And the commercials for this thing heavily promoted this feature. It came from the third dimension, with its own brain, its own voice, its own legs. There's only one problem. It needs your eyes. Virtual Boy. See it now in 3D. Upon the reveal of the Virtual Boy, people were extremely excited for what Nintendo had brought to the table. Offering this new piece of innovative gaming tech, people were extremely curious to see what the console had to offer, and the 22 eventual games that were developed for it, what they could offer as well. However, the Virtual Boy ran into a number of issues during development, including the reception of people who tested out the Virtual Boy. Considering the fact that you were wearing a headset on your head, looking through this monochrome red layer, seeing these bright lights constantly while you're playing the game. A lot of people complained about dizziness, nausea, and their eyesight being affected playing this console. In addition to a lot of the health issues that people reported while playing this console, there was also the issue of the development of the Virtual Boy itself. Nintendo were gearing up for the latest release of their next big budget console, the Nintendo 64. However, because they had two major teams focusing on both the Virtual Boy and the N64, Nintendo ultimately rushed the project to bring the Virtual Boy to market. That way more efforts could be placed on the Nintendo 64 itself. All of these factors, including the complaints, development issues, and even the game's lead director, Shigeru Miyamoto, eventually distancing himself from the project, the Virtual Boy, Shigeru Miyamoto, distancing himself from the project to focus on the Nintendo 64. This console was rush released in early 1995, and the reception that followed clearly showed the console's quality in the long run. Upon its release, despite the rush development and a lot of the internal issues Nintendo suffered, this game was critically and commercially bombing upon its release. Not only did it have very few games released, once again with 22 total games being released across this console's lifespan, which isn't much to begin with, I'll grant you. The fact of the matter is, 
the issues that people reported health-wise were still present. People were still getting headaches, suffering from issues of having their eyesight affected, and people just couldn't stand to play this console in addition to a lack of games. Add that to the fact that this technology hadn't exactly been perfected, and the console itself suffered a number of glitches and bugs that people had reported because of this rush development, the Virtual Boy was completely slammed by critics, getting several negative reviews, with many people calling it a waste of time. The biggest issue concerning the Virtual Boy when I came to actually playing the games was with that red monochrome lens that Nintendo decided to use to give you the interactive VR experience. Not only did it induce headaches in the game for players who were wearing the headset on their head constantly, but the game quality didn't exactly look the best for people to be able to focus on enjoying the experience with games like Wario Tennis that was released on the Virtual Boy itself. The games didn't look the best, and the interactivity was not that good. And based off of footage like this, and how the Virtual Boy games looked even then, I can kind of understand why this reception was given when it was released. With all of this reception in mind, and the fact that the Virtual Boy itself sold less than 1 million units, making it Nintendo's worst selling console of all time. The fact of the matter is, the production of the Virtual Boy ceased in 1996, and has since remained simply a relic of Nintendo's past. An iconic idea that ended up being very poorly executed for a number of reasons. And with that everyone, that is a brief history of the Virtual Boy. Kind of briefly covering its history, reception, and ultimately what it really means today. The Virtual Boy had some extremely creative ideas, but ultimately with all the issues that happened with it and that it had itself on the console, it's ultimately just a relic of gaming's past. But I hope you guys learned something new about the Virtual Boy. Maybe this will encourage you to go and check it out for yourself. Maybe watch some footage, maybe buy a console, or maybe try it out for yourself physically. Or maybe you just learned something new about a piece of gaming history once again. But I appreciate every single one of you guys who watched this video today. Thank you once again. If you guys did enjoy this video, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you guys want to catch more videos like this in the future. I would love to do more gaming-esque history videos where I talk about different pieces of tech or companies and that kind of thing. And please comment down below what you guys think about this video. Do you guys remember the Virtual Boy? Has anyone actually played this console? And if you have, have you suffered from any of the issues or backlash? that the Virtual Boy received when it came out, like with having your eyesight affected or the game quality being poor. Let me know your experiences with the Virtual Boy if you have played it or what you think about it in general. I'd be curious to know. But otherwise, guys, once again, thank you so much for checking out this video. And until next time, this has been Ryan from the Nostalgia Factor saying, keep on gaming. And remember, gaming's legacies.